our last speaker is uh, Zhang Weiyu, and uh, Weiyu is um, Associate Professor in the Department of Communications and New Media, uh, and as well as the Deputy Head of the program at NUS here. Thanks, thanks, Audrey. Um, let me bring out my slides. Um, um, Elmi, uh, speaking of um, ugly color presentation, <laughs> this <laughs> right. Um, there's a reason why uh, it looks a little bit, a little bit outdated. Um, you know, uh, oh, first thing first. Thanks, um, Audrey um, and Alyssa, all, all the people who have made this workshop happen, so that I can have the opportunity to really um, go back uh, and to see what I have done uh, in my first decade of academic career, right? So this particular project uh, was the first ever uh, transnational project I have done in my entire academic life. I was still in grad school uh, back then, right, in the United States, in Philadelphia. So I remember I was called by, hey, let's see my students over. I remember I was called by um, the, the project lead um, and asked, we, you know, we are trying to do a civic engagement kind of project in Asia. Do you want to do a subject project under this, right? I was, yes, I want. And uh, then I thought about this, what do I want to do? Um, and this topic just immediately pops out in my mind, right? I want to do something about young people, youth, uh, ICTs and a civic engagement, right? Um, so I guess it's good uh, time to think about. Um, sorry. So uh, I'm using uh, reusing my slides. These slides came from six years ago, right? What I'm going to do is to reflect on some of the content and just try to make a contrast um, then and now, right? Why this doesn't work? You can use the keyboard. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so oh, what, uh, you know, now I think back, why that topic, use and ICTs, immediately appeared in my mind. Uh, why do we, as researchers, want to study use and their engagement, right? Uh, I think Tracy has done this uh, summary very well, right? Two reasons, uh, hope and hate, right? So uh, first, uh, use is often seen as a pivotal group when it comes to social changes, right? Uh, especially um, as a relatively young scholar by that time, I think I was more motivated by this uh, approach, right? I wanted to understand how the young people engage in politics uh, from their own point of view, right? Instead of uh, blaming them as being apathetic, as being, you know, uh, chaotic, right? Why uh, are they doing this? Is there any potential for social changes, right? For improvement, for progress that would grow out of these so-called relatively new innovative ways of using ICTs in civic engagement, right? Uh, of course, there's this uh, uh, approach in contrast, which often comes from maybe a use policy kind of, use governance uh, kind of perspective. Use are perceived as chaotic, unruly, uh, engaged in risky behaviors, right? In, including political behaviors, right? Uh, and in, uh, on the other hand, a majority of them seem to have no interest in uh, established institutions of politics, right? So how can they be governed? How can they be disciplined into social norms? How can they be at least socialized into the existing structure? There was, I think, another motivation that has uh, driven uh, some of the research on use ICTs and civic engagement, right? Um, you know, uh, now uh, I think um, I'm no longer just from the first perspective, although I, I'm still not advocating the second perspective, right? But I do think that uh, even youths are very creative, very innovative uh, in trying ab about new things. They still have to somehow interact or interface with existing institutions if they really want to make changes, okay? Um, so um, you know, there was also the question about why do we want to focus on ICTs. I think that question is no longer asked, right? It's now assumed, right? Why not that you, that you don't include ICTs in your, uh, in your research, right? Um, but at that, that moment, at least, um, the ICT development was not even, right? It was not equal. Uh, there were uh, rapid growth of the technology around the world, but certain parts of the world were lagging behind. Uh, when it comes to ICT adoption, right? So I was posting a picture that I took in Sri Lanka uh, to show uh, how new technology and high technology has been 
um, at least seen or, or experienced in a country like Sri Lanka. Right? It's very different from the Apple flagship sh shop you see on Ultra Road. Right? Um, so uh, the uneven development of ICTs, would that matter when it comes to youth engagement in politics? Right? That was one of the questions I wanted to ask at the time as well. So, forgot this. Right? And so when you put youth and ICTs together, right? so it's like the, the monster meets the alien. Right? So you know, they are all both powerful, but at the time, uh, we have very little idea about uh, the power of it. How do we approach it? How do we understand this? Right? Especially when you could look at the generation that was born around uh, 1980s. Right? That was the first generation ever who have never lived a day in a world without ICTs, right? So majority of us, I look around, maybe not even majority now, only half of us might be uh, the ones who lived in the era whereas uh, there wasn't a thing called internet, right? So that was the first time the net generation was appearing, right? So looking back, uh, comparing to nowadays, what's different? The net generation basically has already grown up, right? Uh, at that time, there were still digital kids, kids right? Now they're digital adults. These people started to vote right, in elections. These people started to become politicians and candidates. Right? They're making real impacts and changes to the, to the society now. OK, so these are the motivations behind that project. I think that motivation is still uh, more or less relevant nowadays. Um, uh, I want to speak a bit, little bit about the project itself. Right? Uh, other than that, it's my first ever uh, project, right? I felt that, uh, you know, what I've learned from this project, right? Um, not, it's not only the academic findings, the journal articles we have published, right? I felt the most important thing I've learned from this project is to how to work in this region, right? With researchers and academics from all kinds of uh, uh, situations and institutions, right? So these were the questions uh, we uh, wanted to ask through the project. The project team itself was made up by five major researchers, right? I myself, uh, I do the Singapore part, right? Uh, I, I have a Filipino um, uh, collaborator, Dr. Clarice David, uh, UP from UP Dillon, actually, you know, where's our UP? <laughs> yeah, colleague. I don't know whether you know her, right? So she, she is now a full professor, I, I believe so, right? Very active uh, in, uh, in the Philippines when it comes to uh, at least uh, social media, uh, fake news regulation, right? Legislation. Um, we have uh, Dr. Joanna uh, from University of Nottingham, Malaysia campus, right? She's now uh, the head of the, the program, the communication program in the university right now. We also have an Indian collaborator, Vignesh. Uh, she, I believe, is also a full professor now. Uh, Ula, Sahi Ula is our Bangladeshi um, uh, collaborator. When he collaborated with, with us, he actually was already a full professor over there back, back in Bangladesh, but he was uh, trying to uh, seek for um, a PhD education somewhere else, right? So now uh, he has already completed uh, his PhD education in Australia and returned back to uh, Bangladesh, right? So the design at the time, uh, was, you know, I was interested in two regions, uh, Southeast Asia and South Asia. So I want countries from both regions, right? And um, also, I wanted to make a differentiation between uh, two things, right, uh, uh, about two things. One is ICT penetration level. Some countries are more advanced than other countries when it comes to ICT development, right? So I purposefully chose a few countries that were more advanced, such as Singapore, right? And some countries that were at least very lacking behind at the moment, right? Like Bangladesh uh, um, in the case, right? And I also wanted to look at countries that from the same region, but have quite different political systems, right? So Singapore, at least uh, at, at that time, right, wasn't, you know, even now, maybe wasn't considered as full democracy at all, right? But the Philippines, in contrast, they had a lot of uh, democratic uh, potential and freedom back then, right? So I also wanted to see how the different political systems would probably speak to uh, or, or influence how ICTs might be used in youth engagement when it comes to politics, right? So um, that was the design of the uh, whole study. Um, you know, uh, this is a very international, at least transnational um, team. Uh, you know, uh, all of us uh, regularly live in our own countries, right? Uh, how do we collaborate uh, 
we uh, collaborate through these means, right? We have held, uh, I think, two times workshops during the three time, uh, three years uh, project. So all of us met in a physical location, talked about our progress and challenges, you know, shared with us the findings and, uh, and some some of the uh, the problems and issues, right? Uh, we also, uh, you know, uh, held. Uh, uh, so-called interpersonal reading, but these are more like me traveling around a region, uh, trying to speak to the team, the country team individually. I remember there was a year I almost uh, uh, traveled a flight out uh, once a month right? <laughs> during that year to all these different countries to meet the project lead uh, and the, the research assistants over there. Um, and we conducted things like uh, interview uh, method training, right? Uh, believe it or not, uh, some of the country researchers don't really know how to do academic interviews, right? They know how to do probably journalist interviews, right? But they don't really know how to do academic interviews. So we were training them. We went to uh, interviews along with the researchers, observed them re-interviewing uh, the, the, the subjects and you know, try to give them feedbacks about how to do a better interview, right? Um, and uh, there was this was an uh, ICT project, right? So yeah, well, these are the um, pictures I took during my trips, right? Um, you know, Philippines, was, uh, typhoon <laughs> over there. Uh, you know, um, uh, I think this was Bangladesh, uh, the view uh, in front of my hotel, window, India, uh, Sri Lanka, right? Um, so uh, another means for collaboration was uh, through um, this digital uh, platform, right? So at that time, we still have Google Groups. Right? I don't think we have Google Groups anymore, right? Uh, so we set up like a website for the entire team. We had uh, regular updates. We shared files, documents through uh, the website. And uh, although it sounds like a long time ago, but we already started using Google Docs right, somehow um, at that time. Uh, so the interview, uh, you know, we conducted interviews and focus groups, right? The interview guides, uh, the inter focus group guides were really truly a collaborative product, right? So we edited basically um, this uh, master file to make sure that uh, it suits the country context, right? Some questions might be more prominent in some countries but not the others, right? So the whole team, five of us, all worked on this to make sure that the interview guide is suitable, is fit, uh, that does fit the country context, right? Um, so the outputs of this project, actually, uh, if you want to know uh, our major findings, you can just go and find um, this special issue that has been pu uh, published in International Communication Gazette, right? Uh, it summarizes uh, the major findings, right? Um, and you know, we went to conferences and so, on and so forth. You know, when, when I look back uh, on these numbers, I thought, well, that's not really bad, right? 100 over um, interviews from different uh, five different countries. Oh, a few words about Sri Lanka. You know, a thing I learned a lot from this uh, project was uh, every so-called successful project a uh, successful project fails in certain ways, okay? So uh, my project fails in the way that uh, I wasn't able to uh, to secure uh, a research partner from Sri Lanka, right? So I actually tried twice. I changed two times my research collaborators uh, back in Sri Lanka, just um, very unfortunately that none of them was able to complete the task, right? So if the six country project became a five country project <laughs> eventually. Um, all right, uh, so that's basically the project. How much time do I have, Michelle? Seven minutes. Oh, okay, that's great. I'll, I'll be quick. You know, I don't think these findings uh, still uh, are that uh, so-called innovative now, right? You know, many of the findings or observations we had at that time now seems to be like common sense, like issue-based activism, right? You know, it becomes part of our everyday uh, uh, vocabulary about uh, youth activism, right? It wasn't that. Uh, but I'll we'll try to reflect on this, right? Uh, so uh, the declining trends, you know, we, 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 these are very, very different countries. Yeah, the first thing I want to say is these are very, very different countries. You know, I'm risking my reputation here to try to generalize some certain trends out of these, right? Uh, but, you know, let me try to see whether it makes sense still, right? So what's the declining trend? Uh, we've noticed that uh, at the time, the young people were trying to bypass the existing institutions to get things done, right? 
Um, you know why uh, they don't want to vote, vote that much uh, in the elections? It wasn't because that they don't care about politics. They realized that uh, by voting, it doesn't really make a difference. The thing, uh, the, you know, we can vote for different parties, but the same kind of policies and political consequences we're going to have, you know, no matter which party we voted, right? So uh, they don't see that kind of existing institution being effective in, uh, you know, at least uh, implementing the kind of politics they want, right? So uh, they were using ICTs as alternative ways, right, to make their politics happen, right? Uh, they want to get information, they want to disseminate information on these channels, especially when they don't have very free and easy access to the traditional existing media channels, right? This is especially the case with Singapore and Malaysia at that time, right? So, um, you know, the mass uh, traditional media clearly are not that available, right, to the young people, especially the young activists, right? So, just that they cannot get their words uh, or their perspectives uh, into these traditional media. That's why they decided to go to the internet, right? They set up, at that, at that time at least, um, their, their websites, their blogs, right? You know, trying to uh, to make their voice heard, their opinions articulated on these alternative spaces, right? Um, and in uh, the other three countries, one, the media system is relatively open, right? Bangladesh, India, and the Philippines, right? We all observe what we see, uh, two-step activism, right? So what does it mean by two-step activism, right? They understand how uh, mass media work very well, right? Uh, as long as there are enough people who pay attention to the issue, right? You know, mass media will pick up that issue. So they will use ICTs as the first step, right? To gather as much attention, as much uh, support as possible, so that the mass media will feel that uh, they have to cover the issue, right? The fact that this online post gets circulated over thousands of times, right, can make news uh, headlines, right? So they use that to get into mass media, but they never underestimate the importance of mass media, right? Is it just that uh, they don't have easy access to it, right? So they use this two-step activism to get their work done, right? Um, Another so-called, we were talking about the institution of traditional media, right? So another traditional institution could be the parties, right? Uh, you know, uh, the demise of party politics really was observed, um, at least uh, in this part project, right? Um, so the young people have weak sense of identity of being a partisan, a member of a party, right? And they don't uh, uh, even uh, believe that much in party politics, right, either, right? Um, you know, in Singapore and Malaysia, you know, there was a reason for it, right, because opposition party politics was not really allowed, right, was not at least uh, really encouraged by the system, right. So I noticed that, uh, you know, many of these are activists, young act activists in Singapore and Malaysia, they, they refuse to call themselves activists, right, because activists are often linked to the idea of opposing the government, right, trying to do something that hurt hurts uh, the, the establishment, right? So they refuse to be called activists. But what they are doing really are advocating for issues, trying to get solutions to problems that they care, right? Um, in other countries, you know, it's more out of the kind of the disdain of the very corrupt and uh, very close the party systems, right? So they don't, they don't like to be that part of that system at, anymore because it gives you a bad name if you are part of that uh, game, right? Um, so, um, what is rising? Uh, I have two minutes, so I'll, I'll be quick, right? What is rising, at least at the moment, was this, right? They wanted to do, they wanted to get things sorted out in their own hands, sorry. So, they wanted to, you know, to, 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 to change maybe smaller scale problems, right? But they wanted to see uh, immediate and real effects, right? Um, so uh, they use communities as their basis for activism, right? Uh, including online communities, right? Uh, they also do a lot of so-called issue-based uh, activism, right? Uh, in contrast, you can say party-based politics, right? Uh, so they want, they, they care about animal rights, uh, they care about LGBT issues, right? They just want to work on their issues, right? And uh, it's not because, you know, you, you used to be that uh, you belong to a party, you agree with the ideology of the party, so you vote for that party, right? So nowadays, it's more, it's more like that. 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate for this issue, right? I wanted to see which party is on my side when it comes to that issue, right? So that I will decide whether I'm going to support that party or not, right? So issue-based politics rather than uh, um, party-based politics was emerging at the time, but it's pretty much the case, the reality now, right? So, I don't have much time. Uh, and my last slide is going to be an advertisement. Okay, sorry <laughs> for that. Uh, I'm uh, yeah, acti uh, advocating for my own cause here, right? Um, I heard quite a few uh, presentations this morning, actually, that have a focus on China or Chinese in a very broad way, right? So, we're going to hold a Chinese Internet Research Conference in Singapore next year, on June 28th, um, night, uh, 2019, right? So it's a long uh, tradition conference with uh, 17 years of uh, history, right? So you're all welcome to join us. Uh, we're going to focus on digital cultures, right? Uh, and, and we're not going to focus on just on China as a country. We are very much interested in Chinese uh, diaspora, you know, culturally Chinese, whatever, you know, uh, associated with the term Chinese beyond the the boundary, the geographic boundary of China. Right? So that's the end of my talk. Thank you so much for listening.